Hello everyone, welcome to my exposition about Sherlock Holmes and the sign of the four. We all know Sherlock Holmes, it's them, and more recently it's them. But the Sherlock Holmes in the story is quite different, he's more like this. I decided to go for a little analysis. Why is it brilliant as a case, and why was it written? Just a little warning, I will be spoiling it hard right now, because I'm about to sum up the story and I'm gonna need to put details. So if you don't want to hear that because you want to read the story, there's a short version in the description and I think you should go to this time code when you're finished reading. Alright, now that we're between people that want to hear the story, here it is. Beginning of the story, Watson is mad because Sherlock is taking cocaine or not, but he explains that it's because he's bored and he has the case and that keeps him busy. Or rather, it keeps his brain busy. It's a way to see things. Here enters Miss Mary Morstan and she tells a story. Her father sent her back to London when she was four and ever since he died a few years ago, she's been receiving pearls of quite good quality and this year there was a note with it saying, come to this dress, you can bring two people with you and I'll tell you what happened to your father. So she asks them, can you please come with me? And they say, well, okay. They arrive at the house of Major Sholto's son, second son actually, Thaddeus Sholto, and Major Sholto happened to be a friend of her father, Captain Morstan. He explains that due to a bad incident, her father found death, and as everyone believed that the Major had killed him, along with the servant, they decided to bury him in their grounds. Many years later, he tells the truth to the sons, and that the chaplet from which the pearls were taken belonged to her, along with half of the treasure he and Morstan found. After the Major's death, Thaddeus decided to send her the chaplet, pieces by pieces, to make it easier on her. At least that's what I got. Once they heard the story, they decide to go to his brother's house, to see if there is any way that she can claim what belongs to her. But, he's dead. Thaddeus is arrested, being the last person who saw him, while Watson and Holmes start their inquiries. They know he hasn't killed his brother, and find evidence proving it. Blah blah blah, lots of things happen, and thanks to Toby the dog, they get to the Thames and discover the thieves slash killers took a steamboat. Yes, because they stole the treasure too. After a long track, they finally catch Jonathan Small along with Tonga, the Indian that helped him, who died during the pursuit. Small was the one who frightened to death Major Sholto, who was already about to die though, and responsible for his son's death. Actually, it's Tonga, long story with the book is cool. There's a little hiatus during which Watson brings the box containing the treasure to Mary, but when they open it, it is empty. Small emptied it in the Thames. Then, back to Chichi 1B and the story of Jonathan. How he lost his leg, escaped the revolution, stole the treasure along with three other men, together they were the sign of four. How he got in prison, got swindled by Marston and Choldo, and escaped to get revenge. At the end of the story, Watson says that he proposed to Mary, and she said yes. Oh, okay, we're done with this um, rather long sum up. So, maybe I should explain why the sign of the four. It's because Small didn't cover that chest by himself, but along with three other men, Abdullah Khan, Mohammed Singh, and Dost Akbar. They swore to always protect it, as long as they could, unfortunately, because they had killed the man bringing the chest and got framed for it, they got a life sentence to prison. Not only did Major Shelter wrong Captain Mostyn, he wronged the four of them and, in a certain measure, he wronged Mary too. A little rewind, let's come back on the why it was written. It was a commission from Joseph Stoddart and written in only a month. Why? Because did Doyle here had another novel to finish and didn't want to waste too much time on his command. To help himself, he decided to pick back two characters he had developed in a previous novel named A Study in Scarlet. I named Sherlock Holmes and Dr. John Watson. The only problem it caused were some mistakes from one novel to the other. For example, in the first one, Watson has been hurt to the shoulder and here it becomes the leg. But 
at the time it wasn't a problem. Doyle didn't have as much recognition as he did online, was already pretty famous, but not obviously for Sherlock Holmes. And Holmes and Watson weren't as famous as they are now, so it went through. And stood out was the director of the Lippin Cults monthly magazine, and that's where the novel was released in 1890. That's why I asked for it. Okay, we got the origins, the story. Um, let's get to why is it brilliant? Hmm? Well, every case of Sherlock Holmes is brilliant. I don't risk much saying that, but Doyle has this ability to make this incredibly clever case which is especially cool when you know that they come from his mind only no case is similar in any kind of way were committed before he wrote them and none were inspired by it which is surprising actually at least none came out of my researches why is it brilliant okay one it's the illustration itself a good coincidence if miss morrison hadn't brought them with her it would probably not have been solved, and that the shoulder would have been unfairly accused. They were here and they knew what to do. 2. They could have been called later? Yeah, but what if they hadn't? It would have been a close case with the wrong accused by the end or not. And 3. Only someone with both the knowledge and network of homes could do it. See the details so small, it would take a regular person ages to decipher. Who would realize right away that the footprints are those of someone who never wore shoes because the toes aren't smashed together? A good detective with a bit more intelligence than Detective Jones, the one in charge of the case in the story, could come up to that. But not in a time as short. It would take quite some time to get to the Thames and the steamboat. And because of that, the kids would have had plenty of time to get away. That's the one thing you can blame Sherlock Holmes for. He's too perfect. He always know just the right thing. Okay, he's a fictional character, but that dehumanizes him too much. This being considered, let's remember this sentence from Francis Lacasson. Le lecteur ne réclame pas de Holmes l'authentique, mais le merveilleux. Which is pretty true. We read these stories because they make us dream. On a complete other matter, this novel is a very good way to see how foreign countries like India and strangers were seen in the 19th century. And what's coming out is that they were seen as nothing more than slaves or at best servants. They weren't seen as potential friends, even for small, when he made a friend of Tonga. He probably was seeing him as a way to escape and get revenge more than as an actual person and friend. We may know that this is a definition to be refined, but Doyle makes it appear this way in the story. After all, the first inspector around would arrest a man just because he's the last one to have seen the one that was murdered in the name of common sense. The 19th century, another idea of equality. Okay, let's switch to the BBC episode. As a matter of fact, there is only three elements from The Sign of Four that are found in the series. Those in the episode named The Sign of Three, because of the name, and the presence of Major Sholto stabbed not for a treasure but for a leading group of newbies into a fight where all of them died, and the tracking made by Toby the Dog in The Six Touches. As much as I enjoyed the BBC series, its lack of connection with the original book is frustrating. There has been a lot of adaptation, though, of The Sign of the Four, and I mean a lot, either in movies or series or other theaters. The earlier is the movie of 1905, Adventure of Sherlock Holmes or The Hell of Four Ransom, directed by G. Stuart Blackton and starring Morris Costello and H. Carl Bellew as Holmes and Watson. Unfortunately, there is only a few images left, I couldn't manage to find them, I'm so sorry. And the movie himself is considered as lost. There is also the first BBC series and the matching episode The Sign of Four, directed by Peter Hammond and starring Jeremy Brett and Edward Ardwag as Holmes and Watson, season 2, episode 8, in 1987. 
and a bit earlier in a partnership between France and Germany was released Das Seiken der Fier, directed by Jean-Pierre Decour and starring Rolf Packer and Roger Lumont as, drumroll please, Sherlock and John in 1974. There's even been a cartoon theory about it in 1983. I'm afraid this is the end of this. I know I diverged pretty far from my original point of why is it brilliant? Mostly because according to me, a story isn't fascinating because of its genius, but also and mostly because of what happens to it after. I do hope quarantine went well for y'all and I will say bye.